Hello and welcome to the New Testament Daily with me, Jerry Dierman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every single day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. You can also help others find out about this resource and stay in the Word daily when you click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or share this link with others. So let's pray and then we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for the precious, written, inspired, living Word of God. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, each of us would hear exactly what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Matthew chapter 15 from the New King James Version. Let's jump right into this. It says this, Then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus, saying, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Oh man, they're opening up a can of worms here. Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered and said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God? See, they're talking about transgressing tradition and Jesus is talking about transgressing the commandments of God in the Bible. And Jesus is showing these are not on the same uh, level. These are not of the same priority. But they thought they were. And so Jesus said, why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Because of your tradition. For God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother. And by the way, let me just point out in previous chapters, Jesus said things like, he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And I've come to divide a family. Uh, son against the father and so on. So, and I let you know, Jesus is not saying he to not honor your father and mother. And here in this passage, you'll see that Jesus is emphasizing that the Bible says honor your father and mother. They're not contradicting. Jesus is just talking about two distinct subjects. And so therefore, he's using uh, family members to illustrate priorities. So notice the priority in this passage is the word of God above traditions. So he said, why do you also transgress the commandment of God, the Bible, because of your tradition? For God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me, it is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father and mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines, teaching as doctrines, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Jesus is saying there's a big difference between the commandments of God and the traditions, the teachings of men. He, and, and Jesus is explaining to them, don't ever raise the eloquence, the insights, the uh, oration of man to the level of God's word. God's word trumps. God's word is truth. And everybody else, in fact, in Romans 3, Paul said, let God be true and every man a liar. That's how you have to treat it. It's like, you know, if, if any human being contradicts the truth of God's word, that they're lying or they're speaking lies, even if they don't realize they're lying, they're speaking lies. And so Jesus is saying to these Pharisees and scribes, he's saying, even though you're of the law and you, you're supposed to teach the law and teach one of the Ten Commandments, honor your father and your mother, but if a young person comes and said, hey, my father and mother don't want me to give this uh, gift to the, to the ministry here, uh, and but I, but I feel like I should do it anyway. And you say, well, listen, you put that on the altar and such, and you're, you don't have to honor and obey your father and mother because you're giving this gift. Well, of course, they wanted the gift. And Jesus is saying, see, you guys came up with traditions that benefit yourself, make you feel more spiritual, make you feel more righteous, but it's really about you. And what you should have done is to say, well, no matter whether this benefits us or whether it does not benefit us, what, did, what does the Bible say? What did God's word say? We should stick with the word of God, see? And so Jesus is saying, you're allowing your tradition to cause uh, people to violate the commandment of God. Uh, 
So we get down here now, and he says, uh, verse 7, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me and in vain useless. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Well, we don't need to hear a bunch of opinions. We need to hear, but what does the Bible say? Our job as pastors, preachers, uh, leaders is to preach and teach the Word of God. God's the one with the wisdom, not us. So our job is to help people understand what God actually said and how to apply it. Well, that's not what they were doing. They were focusing on all of the rabbinical sayings and traditions and such and not actually focus on the Bible itself. Verse 10, when he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand, not what goes, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Now, this relates back to the beginning of the chapter when they were asking, why do your disciples uh, break the tradition of the elders uh, who, because they're eating and they didn't wash their hands. Well, the, the law of the Bible didn't say you got to go wash your hands in a certain way, but the traditions did. And they're saying they're breaking the traditions of the elder, of the elders. And so Jesus is, is pointing out now, he's saying, listen, you need to understand this. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man. If you eat with unwashed hands and you get some germs going in, he said, that's not what defiles you before God. He said, but what comes out of the mouth, that defiles a man. He said, it's those words that you're speaking. And you remember we saw in chapter 12, by your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. He said, it's not what co goes into the mouth. It's what comes out. And, uh, and uh, of course, Jesus taught in another place. He said, he said, don't you know what goes into the mouth? It's going to go through your digestive system and be eliminated. He said, your biggest problem is what's coming out of your mouth, the words. That's what's causing you the issues. Powerful, huh? So Jesus is saying, your elders got their traditions wrong. They don't line up with reality in the spirit realm and with the kingdom of God. Verse 12, then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? See, they're concerned about people pleasing. They're concerned about the religious leaders and we don't want to make them mad. We don't want them to be offended. And so do you know that the Pharisees were offended at this saying? Watch this. But he, he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Boy, that's powerful. Anybody that's in any kind of a ministry or any kind of a role, but Father God didn't plant that, that wasn't his doing, well, that's going to end up being uprooted. That's not going to last. That's what Jesus said. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. He's talking about the Pharisees. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, are you still without understanding? Do you not know? And here's the explanation. Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, uh, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Isn't that a great explanation? And see, we, we got to get our traditions to line up with God's word. Verse 21, then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. So she's calling him son of David. She's calling him the Messiah. And she said, my daughter is severely demon possessed. But he answered her not a word. Why not? Well, we'll find out. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so Jesus is acknowledging here that his personal ministry assignment in these three years before he dies is not to minister to the Gentiles, not to bring them salvation, not to bring them the, the teaching of the kingdom, not to bring them healing. Why? Because the covenant for healing and these things was not yet 
released to the Gentiles, which will happen through the new covenant in the blood of Jesus. This was a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and those descendants first. See, to the, you remember, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans uh, 1, 16 and 17 say. And so it says, Then she came and worshipped him, no doubt kneeling down before him, worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the little dogs. What is he talking about? Here's what he's talking about. Healing is the children's bread. And who are the children? The descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because God made a covenant with Abraham and his descendants. He made a covenant. He made promises to heal them, to deliver them. And she's not a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so he said, a human being that's not in covenant is like a little dog compared to a human being that's in covenant with God. When you come into covenant with God, it raises your status above normal human beings. <laughs> now you've got the creator of heaven and earth that is committed to you. You're in a whole different league now. And so Jesus said, it's not good to take the children's bread. See, notice he didn't say God's bread for the children. He said the children's bread. What does that mean? Belongs to them. This is their bread. It's not good to take the children's bread and to give it to the little dogs. He's, he's calling her a little dog. He's not trying to demean her. He's just trying to say, you're not in covenant with God. It's not your time. The Gentiles will get their covenant uh, soon, but it's not now. So it's not good to take the children's bread, the healing that belongs to the Jewish people, and, get, and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. The children are the master's. The Jewish people are the masters. They're the ones that have the promises of God. They're the ones that have the covenant. They're the ones that have the bread. And she's saying, but even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Now watch this. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Notice he mentions faith, that faith is going to do this. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Now, wait a minute. What did she say? She said, even the dogs get the crumbs which fall from their master's table. The masters, see, children are masters of the dogs. Don't get the idea that this is going all the way up to God. Uh -uh, because Jesus didn't say it's, the, it's God's bread. He said it's the children's bread. She said, yeah, but even the dogs get the crumbs which fall from their master's table, the children. Well, guess what? It just so happens that the, the person she's talking to, Jesus, is a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so she just said, yes, but the children can drop some crumbs to the little dogs. And Jesus said, great is your faith. And he, one of the children, one of the masters, dropped her a crumb and her daughter was healed. Isn't that powerful? Boy, I just caught that revelation just within the last year that Jesus is one of the children himself. He was born of the descendancy of Abraham. And so he's got this covenant by birth. And so when she said that, he said, you're absolutely right. And he threw her the crumb and her daughter was healed. Oh, the compassion of the Lord, but also the insight, the revelation that is coming forth from his word. All right, I got to get moving here. Got a little excited about this. Oh, let me just say this too. Now that you're born again and you're in the the blessing of Abraham has come on the Gentiles. Do you remember Galatians 3, 13 and 14? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles who were in Christ Jesus. So now this children's bread that was only for the Jews, now it's for the Gentiles who are in Christ, because if you're in Christ, he's Jewish, he has that blessing of Abraham, and now you have whatever blessings on his life. So now this children's bread belongs to you, and guess what we can do? We can even take and give it to people who are not yet in covenant with God, not yet in the family of God. It doesn't belong to them yet, but we can take and drop crumbs to them so that they can be healed. And it'd be like the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And Jesus allowed people to taste without making a full commitment so that they can see. And, and he could say, you want some more of this? Come on, come into the family. Come serve God. And we would say to people, come be saved and receive from God. Okay, now watch this. 
uh, verse 29. And Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on the mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Didn't say some of them, and that he healed them, implying he healed them all. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed, the maimed made whole, uh, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. See, this is the God who made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. They glorified the God of Israel. See, the one who made these covenants with their forefathers. See, and so it's actually happening. They're seeing it before their very eyes. He's doing it. He's doing it through the ministry of Jesus. Now, Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Then his disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude? Now, first of all, we have two things that we have to say right here. Number one, don't you remember when you fed the 5,000 men plus the women and children with five loaves and two fish, and you've forgotten already? You, you don't remember that that happened? Also, when it says, how would we get enough bread uh, in the wilderness to feed such a great multitude, forgetting, did you not read the story of the Exodus when God brought two to three million people out of Egypt into the wilderness and fed them with manna every day? See, but they don't have on their minds the power of God. They're thinking their own ability. And even though the miracle had happened sometime in their past, they're right back down to where they were before. We don't have enough. And folks, that's the way we are sometimes. Maybe we've had miracles. We've seen the power of God before. But for whatever reason, we revert right back to our ability instead of looking to the greater one who's in us. And so... They said, how would we get all this in the wilderness? Verse 34, Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven and a few little fish. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. Same thing as with the 5,000. And they took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. Now those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. So you might have whatever, let's see, maybe 16,000 if you have the, an average of uh, your wife and two children, 16 to 20,000 maybe. And he sent away the multitude, got into the boat, and came to the region of Magdala, which by the way has been recently excavated there on the uh, west side of the Sea of Galilee. 